Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we are going to explore how WASP fields can be used to drive an aggregation not only to follow surfaces but also to fill entire volumes. We are going to do that by using a simple part and driving this part to fill the volume of a complex uh, three-dimensional geometry. If you download the Rhino file that you can find in the description below, you will find two elements. One element, first you're going to find the part that is a very simple edge-shaped profile with two connections of each of the branches. And then you're going to find the complex, not really good looking freeform surface that I created by simply moving, randomly moving some, uh, some of the control points of a torus. And what we want to do in this tutorial is we want to get this part and create an aggregation that will follow the internal volume of the structure and go on and fill it completely. Uh, to do that, we are going to create a field that has values which accurately represent the volume of this part. Let's go on and get started by creating our part. We have been doing this several times, so that should be quick. Let's first of all create a geometry component and right click on it and set multiple geometry and select our part. Oh, sorry. We need just one geometry, so select one and hide it, and then we can hide it. And then we're going to create a point component. Right click, set multiple points, and we're going to select first the two outer ones and then the two inner ones. And then we're going to create a curve component. Right click, set multiple curves and let's select them in the same order. So first the outer ones and then the inner ones. Great. Now that we have all the components, we can go to the WASP tab and create our part. We're going to bring a basic part. I'm going to name this simply L capital for simplicity. I'm going to connect my geometry to geometry. And then we'll go to elements, connection from direction, and connect our geometry, our connection centers, and our connection directions. And we see that our planes are created correctly. And we can go on and connect this to our connection. Now that we created our part, we can go on and initialize our aggregation. We're going to go to field aggregation, get a field driven aggregation specify our part as part let's say that as number we want 150 as a start and then for the rules we are just gonna drop a rule generator and just let it create all possible rules as anyway these connections are all compatible between each other let's also create our reset button and let's now move it in creating our fill what we said is that we want to create a field that will accurately represent this volume. This means that we have to do two things. The first thing is we have to create a, vol um, a field in which all the points that are outside these volumes are actually set to zero. And then we want to create a field which is uh, based on the distance of from this the surface of this volume. And we're going to have want to have high values when we are far from the surface, so when we are in the most in the deepest parts of this volume and then have lower values when we get closer to the surface. In this way what our aggregation is going to do is it's going to grow slowly from the center and go and fill all the volume. Let's go on and bring our geometry in. So right click, set one geometry and then let's go on and hide it in Rhino. And now this is a really um, handy uh, feature that I recently implemented in WASP. If you go on and get a field point component, we don't need to create a bounding box for the box, for the geometry that we want to uh, create, but if we can simply connect the geometry as the boundary, the field is automatically generated uh, matching the bounding box of ge the geometry. Not only, but WASP also automate if this geometry is a closed volume, uh, WASP will automatically recognize all the points that are inside and automatically assign a value to z 0 to all the points that are outside of it. 
Now the resolution is right now a little bit coarse and it's set to 6 units by default so let's maybe go down to 2. Nice. We have our points and now what we want to do is we want to do what we have done all the times. So we're going to create a pull point component, connect with our points and our geometry and that's going to return us, return us all the distances and then what we're going to do is we're going to remap these distances create a bounds to detect the boundaries oops not this one sorry the boundaries of our array of points and then we are not going to change the target because in this case we want to remap from 0 to 1 so we want to have high values at the center of the volume which is more far away from the surface and very low values when we get close to the surface uh, lastly as always we're going to create a graph mapper With yeah, once again, and and I'm gonna leave it at default for now. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go and get a field component. I'm gonna name it, for example, my volume. We're gonna connect the empty field, and we're gonna connect our values. And there we go, our field is generated. Now that's a little bit difficult to see what happened because I told you that all the points that are outside the volume are zero, but well, you have no way to check that. If you would want to check that, we can very simply go to the aggregation tab again and get deconstruct field. And this component will just take our field and explode it in all its components. If we now get our points and create a custom preview for them and use a gradient connected to our values once again I'm gonna change to we can have a look at what we created Now the difference is kind of small at the moment, so we might want to change our graph mapper a little bit. But you see what happened. Oh, we can hide this. We see that now we have all the points that are inside the volume that have a higher values. And then everything that is outside that volume is actually green, meaning that it's been assigned the value of zero. Great. Now that we created our uh, volume, our volumetric field, we can simply go on and connect this to our field. And in order to check what we created, we can go to part, get part geometry, hide our field for now. And now we see that what we are actually doing as we increase the number of parts, we are actually approximating our uh, base geometry. Now this is a little bit difficult to see, so one thing that you might want to do is you might want to create a UV representation of this surface and we can do that by creating a ISO line, ISO curve component where we are going to connect our torus right click on S to reparameterize it so to ensure that the UV domains are both spanning between 0 and 1 and then we are going to create two range components connect them to a point so to a construct point component to the X and to the Y and then connect this to the UV and now you see that what this generates is a UV grid over the surface so that we can go on now and hide our surface and we can actually have a schematic representation of where our surface goes. We can now go back to our aggregation start increasing and see that as we increase the number of parts our aggregation comes to approximate 
our surface with more precision. We can now create a custom preview to see this a bit better once again. And now I can maybe go in Arctic view. So this is to see this is a bit better. And now what I can also do is that I can go back to wireframe view right click on the right gray light bulb to unhide my geometry select the base geometry activate the control points from here and I can then start shaping my geometry in a different way but for example moving some of the control points in a different way and then going back to WASP resetting my aggregation and now seeing that my aggregation is actually following that geometry. So you see how by simply creating a closed volume you can very quickly have an aggregation that is able to follow very complex volumes and you can use more conventional modeling techniques by just modeling by hand by pulling control points and have a direct approximation of this volume through um, your discrete aggregation. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope everything was clear. As always, if you have questions, comments or feedbacks, write in the description below. If you want to stay updated and you like the videos, please subscribe to the channel and you're going to get notified when new videos will come. And for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.